there's an episode entitled Spock's Bray. Well, zany and awful are two different things. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's, they are indeed, Josh. <laughs> there are variations on zany with Star Trek, the original series. It is it is a cornucopia of zany types. I love that word. So cornucopia? Yeah, I love it. <laughs> That's a good word. Hi, friends. Hello, poppets. Howdy, y'all. Welcome to Muppet Sex and Trauma. I'm Sara Eza. I make the Costume Codex videos on YouTube. I'm Jack Graham, editor slash right-hand man for Passion of the Nerd and editor for Chipperish Media. And my name is Josh Gonton, and I'm a zany cornucopia of uh, <laughs> nerdy things. And that is more than enough. And we're here today to talk about the season finale of the first episode. We have made it through the entire first season of Farscape, and we're going to talk about Family Ties. Oh boy, are we. Family Ties was written by Rockney S. O'Bannon and David Kemper, so the creator of the series and the showrunner. And it was directed by series regular Tony Tilsey. Moya is still hiding in the asteroid field as she can't starburst without the baby. And it seems the pressure of being hunted by the peacekeepers is too much for one member of the crew. Rigel has taken a transport carrier and run off to the peacekeeper command carrier to betray the crew. I want my freedom. Interested? But finds that Scorpius is in charge now, and as much as he wants Crichton, he may not be interested in dealing with a traitor. On Moya, John and Dargo insist that they will not be taken alive and are ready to go out guns blazing the full Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. Oh, just to be in the warm glow of all this testosterone. Zon and Aaron help them form a slightly more practical plan. Someone will fly a transport full of explosives into the command carrier, causing a distraction so everyone else might get away. Preparing for the plan gets everyone nostalgic, thinking about family, thinking about their time together. John and Aaron share a moment where she tells him about a visit from a scarred veteran. My father. My mother. Who wanted Aaron to know that she was born not by accident, but in an act of love. On the command carrier, Crace approaches Rigel to make a deal. We find ourselves in similar situations. Scorpius plans to execute Rigel and to have Crace court-martialed and executed too. There's one way out. Crace will get Rigel off the command carrier in exchange for being granted asylum on Moya. The Moya crew are not exactly happy to see Crace. My boy Crace! And very smartly lock the bugger up. After a full-on come-to-Jesus heart-to-heart with John, Crace does offer to help with the escape plan. It seems he's a changed man. The explosive transport plan won't work, he says. The command carrier is too well guarded. Besides, Scorpius doesn't care about it enough. Dargo has an idea. What about Scorpius' base on the moon? The moon covered in the highly flammable gases. Light is well on fire. It might work, says Crace, but there's one thing Scorpius cares even more about than his base. And there it is, the plan. John and his wormholy brain must be on the transport. And Dargo, being Dargo, won't let him go alone. There is one other tweak to the plan. The boys are going to eject at the last minute and Aaron will try to collect them in her prowler. As everyone goes around saying their goodbyes, Aaron shows Crace Moya's offspring. Crace's admiration of the ship is a bit too fulsome and rather possessive. I'm sure this won't have any future consequences. As go time approaches, Chiana makes the crew a feast. One last meal together, perhaps. And with a prayer from Zahn, they're off. John and Dargo bonding as they take what may be their very last flight. Fear accompanies the possibility of death. Calm shepherds its certainty. I love hanging with you, man. And Scorpius takes the bait, leaving the asteroid field to chase the transport. But he can't shoot it down with John on board. And he knows that. The first part of the plan works. The moon explodes in a big old ball of flames. This is great, this is great, ball of fire. But then things start to go wrong. 
Aaron can't get to the guys, and Moya's baby isn't responding. Call him by his name, pilot. It's Talon. He still isn't responding. Someone is aboard. It's Kreis. Our changed man has changed again. And Kreis flies Talon deeper into the asteroid field and away from his now panicking mother. The command carrier is coming back. But she won't leave. Pass me through to Moya. We know how much you care about your baby. We feel the same way. Your only chance of rescuing him is to save yourself first. Moya, thanks for everything. Moya starbursts away carrying Zon, Chiana, and Rigel. Aaron still can't get to the men, and so we leave them, divided, with John and Dargo suspended in space. So, what did you think? You know, as finales go, this has all of the hallmarks of a good finale. Um, it's there's there's lots of compelling mo- moments. There's lots of sen- sentiment. There's lots of excitement. And then most importantly, it leaves you going, hey, what the hell? What happens next? Come on, man. Um, Because that was my uh, reaction when we did the live watch. Uh, I was like, oh, come on. You can't end it there. But that's what a finale is supposed to do. That is absolutely what a finale is supposed to do. I, I appreciate the audaciousness of a season one cliffhanger. Um, you know, I'm a... I'm a Trekkie mm-hmm. through and through, and so I, I I understand the the nature of television sometimes playing a big role in how production goes. And I know that Farscape wasn't quite solid in its um, ratings at this point, and so the question of whether or not they were going to get another season was big. And so making making it a cliffhanger is as audacious as flying a, a transport ship into a flammable moon. You know, <laughs> it's, like, it's very cocky. It is very confident. Um, it is. Yeah. And yeah. I just, everybody like this, this episode was such a good ensemble piece. Everybody got pretty much like an equal wipe all the way across. Mm-hmm. Um, yes. When they made this, they didn't, they still didn't know if they would get a second season. Um, they didn't know if they would be renewed. And also um, there, there's going to be some changes when we come back to the next season because they also lost the studio they were shooting in. Mm. Oh. <laughs> um, this was, there was a bunch of films being made in the area. I think it was, um, I think it was the Star Wars sequels that they were working on that they lost. That would make sense. Yeah, that would make sense because it time, would have been around yeah. that time. And uh, yeah, they were they were filmed at Fox Studios in Sydney. So yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, so the, yeah, they, they kind of made a finale that you just have to have something <laughs> following it up because you have to know what happens, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, um, I find it funny that um, Rigel at the beginning of the episode says all you do is talk (laughs) and a lot of this episode is talk like there isn't a huge amount of plot in this episode but also like we've been with these characters enough that Mm -hmm. we are riveted for every conversation they're having yeah i would say this is probably the most character driven episode that we've that we've gotten because nothing of note really happens until the end kind of i mean well, not just little character mo- moments, really. Um, yeah, yeah. Even even moving the antagonists into position is all done through you know dialogue and character play. You know, mm-hmm. putting. I loved the scene. We'll get there in a second. I loved the scene with Rigel, Crace, and Scorpius all together in the same room. I was just, I was just eating that up mm-hmm. and like dripping down. My, it was so good. Well, uh, for character developing stuff, shall we start with Rigel because he's. He's uh he delivers the conflict on a plate at the beginning of the episode. Come on, Jack. <laughs> this episode has soured me on that little bastard. <laughs> <laughs> you, like, Rigel, you were the chosen one. Like, I loved you. You were my brother. Um, we was we was rooting for you. We were all rooting for you. <laughs> that was I probably just, too loud. Look, <laughs> this what he does is absolutely in character um Mm -hmm. but i just i guess there was a part of me that just wished that he wasn't just a self-centered selfish (laughs) self-serving little shit but that's exactly what he is and sure he doesn't end up betraying them but 
it's only because he couldn't essentially like 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 he was selling something that scorpius wasn't buying uh yep. yeah so josh do you think this was better or worse set up than the lux and hyper rage moment this was much better set up uh the lux and hyper rage remains unforgivable and <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the, because this was so perfectly in character with Rigel, with for Rigel, like because him, uh, you know, knowing when to fold him is a big part of his whole arc, you know, and it's how he stayed dominant for as long as he did, I'm sure. But also, like, yeah, he's not, you know, he he is among the the group of folks who are like, I'm never going back. I'm not going back. He can't even go back. Um, and so him trying to make one last political maneuver makes plenty of sense to me. And I, I yeah. definitely think that it was so as I was watching the episode, part of why he backs out is not just because Chris is like, Scorpius is going to kill you. Because like Rigel had to believe that that was a probability anyway. But it was a, realizing that he wasn't dealing with Chris anymore. Mm. Mm. He felt like he could. I, I, I make up. He felt like he could get a fair shake and like actual relief if it was Crace, but once he realized that scorpius was calling the shot someone he's never met and doesn't understand yet he was like ooh, ooh, ooh i i'm in too deep like i, I this is bad yeah. <laughs> i felt like we needed a bit more um like oh it, it's it's in his character but i did feel like it does come out a bit of left field like we mm. could have taken a couple moments last episode to show how panicked he was we did see that he was frustrated but i don't think we had enough to yeah this, so this feels a little contact conflict vending machiney um yeah but I, I'll, isn't, I'll, isn't the same as fleshing out right yeah i mean i'll accept it because my my rule is um you know coincidences or contrivances are fine if they start action mm -hmm. i i don't i think if you use them to resolve conflict it's wrong but if you but it's, you sometimes need that sort of thing to start conflict so i'm going with yeah, it's a bit conflict vending machine, but I accept it. Um, yeah. I was holding on to hope that it was just a ruse. Um, and even John it thought is. thought that once he say he's like, um, maybe he's just stalling for us or something, and everybody just look, looks at him like, really? But yeah. I like that moment a lot. They were they were just just like, l l l listen to what you 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 just said, buddy. Like, come on. That it's Rigel. That was John and the that was the audience and the writers having a conversation. The audience was like, "Yeah, it's just stalling," and the writers all went, "Really, <laughs> really, yeah, yeah, yeah." Uh, you gotta love John, always trying to see the best in people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, but um, look, it's early, early days. We got lots, lot, lots of time for character character growth, and maybe he's gonna stop being su such a turd but right now for me he's in the doghouse i don't like how dare you rigel i think he did get a lot of development in this episode mm -hmm. like it yeah it, it mattered to him that everybody was upset with him it mattered to him that he let down his friends that's true but he still only didn't go through with it because scorpius was like whatever man like i mean I sure know. but also we'll take a victory in overtime you know yeah. yeah, I mean, I think it's kind of a learning experience to someone who thinks that they can negotiate out of everything mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. run up against the person they can't negotiate with. Yeah, yeah, and then that's true. That's true. John offers him a counterpoint when when Rigel's like, you know, I can do good things, you know, and John is like, he says something like, yeah, I think doing the right thing starts at the beginning of the day, and not after you've been caught. Yeah, and then he kisses him on the head, which was a. A cute moment. <laughs> and John's forgiveness clearly means a lot. Like that is clearly a lot yeah. to him. Sure. Yeah. I guess I'm just finding it hard to see through my 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 disappointment in, in Rigel. <laughs> no, you you guys are absolutely right. Yeah. Yeah, it's okay to be disappointed in Rigel. It's okay to have any kind of yeah. feelings about Rigel. I'm 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 right. delighted for this, uh, because I feel like this is finally the like the the tipping point of I have to change my behavior and my worldview. Mm. Yeah. And I hope that is what we see going forward. I really mm. do. Um, but who knows it, this, this show, I have no idea what, it, what it's going to do. I'm, I'm stumped. Yeah, honestly. I don't know. <laughs> like we, yeah, literally left, we literally left the guys hanging in space over the moon. Yeah. 
Yeah, like holy crap. That is the uh, the joy of Farscape. Is you never quite know where people are going to go. But yeah, let's let's talk about his scene with our antagonists. Mm-hmm. Uh, Rigel, mm-hmm. Josh, Josh, you look excited. So take the floor, <laughs> sir. It, it's it. You know, there there's a particular um, occ- occurrence. I guess I don't even know if it's a trope, but it's an occurrence in film or television where the three like where where more than one lead character or or head character gets to be in a room and play off of each other um and if so like watching Crace and rigel and um uh, scorpius was like watching three points of a triangle and they were just all they were just all spinning around each other and, and it was it was just so it was musical it was melodic Mm. like you know rigel was the domino Crace was the commander and scorpius was the whatever scorpius's job title is uh <laughs> mm-hmm. you know dom or whatever and so he was you know they, the, <laughs> all dom. three of them yeah <laughs> scorpius was daddy and so all three of them were at the top at the quote-unquote top of their field and it, you know it's like watching three alpha lions compete I, that's yeah, that's why i, I love it so much you know because what we didn't get to see rigel the goofball we got to see rigel the dominar yeah yeah like uh moving chess pieces on a board and i loved how uh um lani tupu and i forget scorpius's uh actor's name wayne pigram um, that's it i i love how the how they played uh with the uh puppet too like it, it just seemed very natural it was uh, mm-hmm. like like it made rigel feel like a real breathing character i, I thought that was really good and uh, Pygram can do so much with just a little bit on his face. And especially, like, they develop yeah. that s- specific stuff. It's called new skin um, to be able mm. to give him that skin prosthetic that would still, like, show all of uh, his facial most. movements. Yeah, it's yeah. Just, I just love that. <laughs> just love it. Yeah, there, there is a lot of, like, subtle nuances in his performance. And I think it's really good. Like, that that's what makes him so freaking terrifying. Like, I'm genuinely scared of him. Like, he's hes very creepy. But I also kind of love him coming, coming up against someone he can't put in his chair. Mm-hmm. And just kind of like, there's something, there's something kind of, there's something to Rigel going into this lion's den and knowing what he's up against and like the kind of no shits given where he's like, yeah, you can't put me in the chair because it'll fucking kill me. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. I, I appreciated also that Grace was the only one of the three who had a full understanding of, of what was going on. Yeah. You know, like Rig- Rigel initially was treating Scorpius like he was Grace's lackey before we realized yeah. what the power dynamics were. And mm-hmm. Scorpius... Yeah was trying to understand Rigel as more than just a file. And Crace was so amazing this episode. Like I, I love him in this episode. Like Lonnie yes. Tupu, 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 you are the freaking man. Like, oh my God. I I Crace might be my favorite part of this episode for some reason. He was just so compelling, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, Shall we talk about the scene in the bathtub? Oh, oh Oh, that came across to me as very um oh, I don't know how to explain it, but it it kind of scary almost, you know, mm-hmm. like 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 it, it remind, yeah, scary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, but I again amazing performance, um, and just playing playing off a of puppet, that must be a very odd thing to uh, do, but he just Lonnie to to nailed it. I wonder if it's if it's freeing because you can really just make your own. You can make the scene your own. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you can do things with a puppet you cannot do with CGI. Yeah. That's true. That's true. Doesn't he? He even like dunks him on un, mm-hmm. under the water. Like it's. Yeah. I was like, holy shit. <laughs> but both of them having that heart to heart of like, we are. We are together, not in charge, and together we are in trouble. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, very good, very humbling for for both of yes. their characters. Yeah, I am not your reaper, Scorpius. Yeah. Says. Shall we shift back to Moya and everybody? Um, the warm glow of all the testosterone at the thought of being captured. 
I don't know. I I wasn't as as engrossed in in the Moya scenes before Rigel got back, because once Rigel gets back mm-hmm. with Grace, the the meat and potatoes that were being served to me really just overtook all the other stuff. But like them, you know, mm-hmm. them worrying and them wondering what's going to happen next and all that kind of stuff. Like they did a really good job with um, just bringing in the sense of like helplessness and hopelessness to this episode. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I and I also appreciated the kind of like um submarine film vibes that we were getting uh you know of Grace's command carrier being on the surface and Moya yeah. being down at the bottom of the ocean and how long can we stay down here and what do we do and yeah yeah there was a really strong sense of camaraderie too but between everybody which I really appreciated yeah I love that the guys um are so determined that they will not be taken you know, I've been in that chair. I won't be again. And that they they'll work together to come up with a plan um, that will save as many people as possible, knowing mm-hmm. that someone will have to may have to sacrifice themselves. Mm-hmm. And then all the the moments that we get, we start. It's in this bit that we start with these moments with people. Mm-hmm. We have John yeah. and Zahn, um, you know, talking to the chief anarchist. <laughs> Yeah, Josh, you um during during the live live watch, you you sort of got the sense that maybe they were setting up someone to uh, die, and I really I agreed with with you. I thought that that's what they were going going for, and I'm surprised that they uh, didn't do it because it really felt felt like it. But I guess they they were just going for these really strong char- character moments where they connect and and mm-hmm. you know love each other. I guess. Yeah, in retrospect, it felt like they were building up tension as a red herring. Um, I, it, to me, it looked like they were really pointing towards Aaron, who was going to yeah. like be sacrificing herself or something like that. Um, because I, I, I still think she was the only one who got some a moment with everybody. Like everybody got a moment, but she was the only one who got a moment with everybody. Yeah, I, th- yeah. I think I think John got a moment with everyone, like everyone but Pilot. He didn't. He didn't get a moment with Pilot. Yeah, and she it's... didn't get a moment with Moya. <laughs> mm, right. Yeah. 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 Um, and of course, we have that wonderful moment between them when John has got his tape recorder out again. Yeah. Oh yeah. <sighs> we hadn't seen the tape recorder in a while. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, that was really cute and just I don't, I don't, I don't know heart heartfelt. I guess. Yeah. Great moment. And that voiceover montage. I'm a sucker for a good voiceover montage. <laughs> like yeah. you, you, you can you can strum my heart with your fingers that way, no problem. <laughs> Just kill me softly. And we get Aaron backstory. Yeah, which oh, yeah. was interesting. And I don't know, it was a little it was a little out of left field in terms of its if its relevance to the current plot. Yeah, um, except to I guess link, you know, Moya and Talon in the in the mother child relationship and Aaron Aaron being really the bridge for that relationship so i guess it's thematic i guess that's why i was there yeah no. i was i was surprised cuz i i imagined Aaron's upbringing to be one of uh chaos and and you know um i i was just surprised to to learn that she came from like a loving home that's that that's not what what i expected <laughs> The story isn't that she came from a loving home. Mm-hmm. She, we, she says she wakes up in a barracks as a child. Oh. To be visited by a scarred veteran. He says, your dad, because they're talking about fathers. And she says, no, her mother. And her mother tells her that she wasn't um, a forced breeding to fill the ranks oh okay yeah yeah she came from a love match so i don't think she grew up with her parents no, especially as at the end they talk about both talk about being taken from their mother both she and craze oh uh, okay yeah yeah that's yeah, my she, mistake yeah she just has this memory of her mother mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. she has one memory to know that she wasn't you know an accident or a forced just birth a, thing. A breeding she was, program. She was this, created through through an act of love. Yeah. Yeah. This this is they're talking about family, and this is her one memory of family. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Which we'll 
pay off with her naming <laughs> with her naming the baby after him naming let's, talon gets a name let's talk about that shall we let's I, talk about talon <laughs> okay i got i gotta be honest i found it a little underwhelming uh talon uh, naming the baby after her father um it's entirely possible that I just hyped it up so much in my head that nothing would have sufficed, I, I, I guess. But I just felt like naming it after a character that we don't know, that Aaron doesn't even really know, just seemed a little off to me. Like, I, I, I thought they would have, they were going to, to name it some, something that was significant to their crew or Aaron or just something that was more central to the plot and the theme. But I guess, I mean, in this episode, it's called fam- Family Ties. So, you know, it, yeah, that fits. But I, I don't know. I just felt, I found it a little underwhelming. It, Did you want them honest. to name it after after John's father? <laughs> I don't know. That's the thing. I I can't even think of a better name myself. But I just... <laughs> I was I just felt underwhelmed by it and I really don't know why. I yeah. Jack's father being named or John's father being named Jack. <laughs> oh, that's right. Well, you, well then yes, of course. <laughs> that would be the perfect name. Such a strong <laughs> name. Yeah, no. Um very shipping. It's not, look, I didn't hate it. I didn't hate it. Like I know and Talon, it's a strong name. Like he's got weapons and you know, like Talon, like it, yeah, it makes sense, but I just found it a little underwhelming. I I loved it. Um, and I love how far Aaron's character has come this season. You know, so her her actually opening up to John about her family and also her like being so just moved by Moya giving her the opportunity to name her baby. Mm. You know, and then and then do it choosing to choosing to uh, choosing a name that actually has emotional resonance resonance for her, like from the Aaron that we first met, who was just like, no feelings, to now like, mm-hmm. this name means something to her, it matters to her, you know, and, uh, yeah. and she gives it as a yeah. gift. It, I, mm-hmm. I, when she said it, I was just like, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I love this moment of Aaron naming um, and it being like from her one fam- memory of family. Um, to be because I don't I don't think Aaron has a lot of loved people that or even a lot of memories of love that she could pull a name from she has this memory mm-hmm. and um she gives it to Moya's child mm. Moya <laughs> who has carried them Moya who has nurtured them and nourished them and loved them yeah. All right, I kind of take it back, kind of. <laughs> yeah, you're warming to it now? <laughs> after you guys, yeah, after hearing you guys to talk about it, like, yeah, that's kind of pretty. I like got, that. Got, uh, we got him. We got him. Yeah. I also kind of, I love that it's sort of talent to me has like implications. Of like it makes me think of a, a dragon or something like that. Yeah, yeah. And 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 he's a leviathan, but he's got weapons. So it makes sense. Like mm-hmm. talent, it's a... Yeah, I think, I think of like a, a bird of prey or something. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. So, 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 so it's fitting. Yeah. Um one one question that popped up uh, for me this episode is: Do we? Maybe I missed it, but do, have have we been told, or do we find out how Maya became pregnant? Is that some something I, I've just completely missed? Or all right, so we can go to the other. The main talent scene is with um Grace and I don't know why Aaron shows him the the the, the, the ship, yeah, but yeah. she to see if he'd be useful, I think. But that that's uh, actually when the question came to me because he does talk about it a little bit, but not yeah, really he says that there have been there have been attempts. So the the clearly they were trying to do something. Hmm. And we had that seal break. So we are going to get another part of this story at some point. Um, okay. But oh, okay. I think so far we, we can see there that there was some kind of plan going on, some kind of attempt. And um, so, yeah, this potentiality for pregnancy 
um, mm. was there because of the peacekeepers. It's clearly peacekeeper mm-hmm. created DNA or some. We don't know exactly how they created this. Yeah, I'm trying to think back to the very first episode. Was was Moya also a prisoner, and they escaped mm-hmm. with Moya? That's yeah. what, okay. Yeah, they yeah, had. They, mm-hmm. They had a control collar on Moya. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Okay, that makes sense then. Yeah, yeah. and that's yeah. that. They had a whole. They had a whole like. Um, they they had a whole bunch of like a herd, of leviathans in control collars, um, oh. that Crace was in charge of, uh, that Moya broke free from. So they may have been trying this on any number of leviathans and. He said they resulted in the death of mother and baby. Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, so, so essentially a, a, a peacekeeper experiment is the likely. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we don't yet know what happened with the experiment, no. but um, this is what we know so far. And he's yeah. so possessive <laughs> in his in his behavior when he's on the um when he's on Talon. Um before yeah, Talon says that was that 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 made me uncomfortable. It really did. It, it's yeah. He's so he, 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 he was so gleeful about it, whereas Aram was just kind of kind of like, no, this is this 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 is not right. This is wrong yeah. what's happened here. Aaron was horrified. Yeah. Mm. Aaron cares about Talon. Crace mm-hmm. was excited that his plan or happened. whatever plan came that he's, you know, knows of has mm. come to fruition. It's still for Crace, it's still about power. Yeah. Mm. Um, but we 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 sort of skipped to uh, we skipped. Uh, a bunch of stuff yeah. in the middle there. Um, yeah. So, uh, so where do we want to go? So, we, do we want to talk about when Grace arrives on Moya? Yeah. My initial <laughs> thought there, I was still so pissed off with right, Ry- right? I'm just like, shoot him, shoot him. <laughs> um, well, yeah, you so, you um, predicted that that Grace was going to have a heel turn. I I did. I and did. He did. And and and. He did kind of, but then he went back. <laughs> and on then it. He I again. haven't given up yet. I haven't given up yet. I have not given up because um I think one thing I was confused about, sorry, just quickly, is um so we we get the reveal that Scorpius knows that Crace has left the, the ship, right? What what I'm not clear on is whether that was something they they came up with or Scorp- Scorpius was just aware that Crace ran away. Um I, I wasn't clear on that. The implication I got was that Scorpius was aware of it and was hoping that he was, I think he was still hoping that he could predict Crace's behavior. Right. Yeah. And that Crace yeah. would, would like eventually like seize Moya and bring him all in and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I think he didn't really care what happened to Crace. But so he just kind of went, well, let him give a, take a shot. If he, if he does okay. what he says he's going to do and brings them back then yeah. that works out. If not, then okay. I don't care. He's already put in the, the paperwork mm, to have him yeah. declared irrevocably right. contaminated, right. which we got to love as a fate for Christ. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> who declared I, Aaron irrevocably contaminated. As I touched on earlier, Christ is so com- compelling this in this entire episode. Um, the writing leaves leaves you guessing the entire time. Like, what is going on? Is he playing? Is 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 is, is mm-hmm. this film real? But um, I honestly think there were so many moments where he 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 was helpful or so supportive when he didn't have to to be. Um, and to me, that implies that he was genuinely trying to help because. If if it was just a ruse, he 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 would try to mislead them. You know, he would try and no, uh, I, screw them over. I don't think that him. So here's here's the Christ thread that I tracked. I don't. I uh, he saw Rigel as an opportunity to get him off of the ship, mm-hmm. and he lied to Scorpius and said, "I'm you know I'm using this guy to to bring him in, so that Scorpius would let them go, and would let them escape." So then he gets to the command carrier and he's kind of like teeth gritted, the enemy of my enemy. This is my best chance of survival. 
kind of a, a thing. But then when he when Aaron tours Talon with him, that's when he sees his next opportunity to do better and gain power back and restore his his um you know his stature or whatever like that. And so that's why he takes Talon. That's why it looks like he makes another turn because he does. He didn't realize mm. when he went to Moya exactly how successful the experiment had been with Talon. Yeah, I th- I think he is totally honest the whole time in yeah, his yeah. own mind. <laughs> you know, I think he is a hundred percent there in that scene with John, which is one of my favorite scenes in the entire series. Oh, that scene! Oh, that, oh, oh. Can, can that, that, that scene, scene is why I wanted to do this show with you guys because, That's... like, I don't know that I've ever seen a scene with that much masculine vulnerability. Yeah. And just like, yeah, yeah I, I just, I thought like, this is, you know, and that, and plus all the scenes with, with John and Dargo, like this is a lot of interesting stuff about mm. maleness. So I'm going to let you guys talk about, <laughs> about the scene <laughs> well, and masculine vulnerability. <laughs> okay. So we kind of got off track there. So we were talk, talking about when when Crace initially arrives on on the uh, ship. So let's mm-hmm. go go back to that for for a sec. I love uh, that the bit with Dargo, uh, where Dargo, Dargo just beats the living crap out of him, and and he just hulks out. Um, and yeah, he's just as you like, can like, see, I am unarmed. As you can see, yeah. so am I. Smack. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then just like admit it, or, or something like that. Like you feel like Hulk's out, and we get the reveal that Chris knew that Dargo was innocent the whole time, and he didn't care. Like, oh my freaking heart! That hit me like like yeah. a ton of bricks, man. Oh my god. Yeah, mm-hmm. they they they've done a really good job of setting Chris up as as a personal antagonist to each individual mm-hmm. character as well as an antagonist to the group. Mm-hmm. It's, it's so good. Yeah. Now when he, when he steps and they're like, they're all, you know, in a, in a line facing the two of them as they come off the ship, just, just finally, finally, finally yeah. getting to see yeah. all these characters in the same room together. And yeah. I mean, yeah. And even like, even Zahn just standing there and being like, yeah, get him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Just, and the performances, oh my god! Anthony Simco and Lightning Tupu, oh my god, mm-hmm. so good, <laughs> so freaking good. And John was in that full like, I might kill you, I don't know, kind of like droopy face that he does mm-hmm. whenever he's whenever he's really like emotionally ruthless. Yeah. Um, but then, yeah, that scene with Crace in the cell and then John. <sighs> I like so much about that scene. I I love the composition of it. I love that we see we see Crace through the bars, like through the uh, hole. It it sets up this feeling of like they're like isolated from each other, but they're still like connecting. Um, and oh, I just I just. <clears throat> Well, um, so let me, <laughs> sorry, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me gather myself in. Let me look at my notes. Um, so yeah, like, like, like John starts, um, telling him about how, like, um, yeah, you yeah, know, Crace's, Crace's talk about how it feels like to be locked, locked up and John, John's ascent, like, this is what we go through every single day, like mm-hmm. being on, on, on the run from you, you, you guys. And then I, I freaking love, and I think this is another moment of uh, uh, truth from uh, Chris where he finally admits that he knows John didn't kill kill his brother on purpose. He knows it, and I believe him. This is not a ruse. It's absolutely not a ruse. Absolutely. God. So, yeah, just the, the, uh, the push in on both of their faces the entire time, just these two these two guys just getting to act their asses off at each other. It was mm-hmm. just, it was just music to watch. Mm-hmm. And, and just the way that like John, like the, he even said that he was like, I did everything I could not to hurt anybody mm-hmm. or, or whatever he says when he's talking about his brother and, and Lonnie, you know, Christ is like, I know, I know, I know. That's, he goes at a certain point, it became something else. And John is like, you did this to us. 
and, and, and then the tear. Oh, oh. And uh, the his admission that he feels homesick when he looks at Grace. Mm. The I am desperate for male companionship. Uh, oh. <laughs> you know, and I'm, it's I'm, yeah, it's the whole. You know, John opens up, and that gives Grace the space to say. Mm what he needs to say, what he's learned by being <laughs> left for dead in the chair, you know? Mm. Um, yeah. Yeah. As, as a man who believes vulnerability is, is a strength that that scene means so much to me. It, it's, it's so empowering and just beautiful. I, I, I love every second of it. And mm -hmm. even just like the way it's shot, the way it's acted, the way it's written, it's just brilliant in every sense, sense of the word. There's an element of getting to look your bully in the eye and saying, you hurt me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, that I've never gotten from my, from my childhood bullies. I, I was, I um, had the, the shit kicked out of me on a pretty regular basis when I was a child. And like, I don't know where those folks are because they were much older than me. I don't really remember their last mm -hmm. names. And I'm not sure that I'll ever get to meet them again. Or if I do, I'm not sure I'll recognize them. But yeah, one of the most dismaying parts about adulthood that I've found so far is that bullies still exist. Uh, and, you know, there's there's a couple of folks that I've I've crossed paths with that I haven't had the opportunity to have that kind of catharsis with because it hasn't been safe to do so, you know? Mm -hmm. And this kind of catharsis mm -hmm. definitely only happens because they lock Chris up. And yeah. because Chris, yeah. because Chris is so disarmed and, and disempowered. Right. But just being able to look somebody in the eye and saying, you hurt me and that mattered, just you is so powerful. Me and that mattered. I love that. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And just the level... John showing Crace empathy with him being in the cell. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there's so much going on in that scene. There's so much. There's so much. Like you could, like, you could write an essay on that scene just by, by itself. It was so satisfying watching them put Crace in the cell. And mm -hmm. you could tell that all the characters are feeling that kind mm -hmm. of like poetic justice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but then the decision to like, like John, Either, I, I don't know if he stuck around or if he went back or whatever, but like they could have just left him there. Right. And John right. chose to reach out to him and say, you hurt me. Mm -hmm. You hurt us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And things didn't have to be I, this way. You made things this way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yeah, Grace, um, again, like I said, Grace, Grace doesn't have to offer up that catharsis, that 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 truth. Uh, you, you know, I know you didn't mean to kill my uh, brother, and which is why I still think Grace is gonna turn and become a good guy. I, I genuinely believe it. It's there. There's too many moments in in this episode where he's helpful or or, or he's kind when he doesn't ha ha have to be. Especially, um, what is the line? Let, let me find it. I've written it down down in my notes. Um. Our pilots are trained to expect evasive maneuvers, fly, fly a direct course. Like that is actually helpful in, information. Yeah. And if he didn't care, he'd just, he'd just let him go, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so I think there's something going on, man. I don't know what, but something's going on. <laughs> I don't think everything is as it seems <laughs> at the end of the episode. You know, okay. peel, peeling back uh, all the shit that, this guy has been carrying around with him and holding on to is going to take time. Mm. You know, we saw, we saw in, in the Maldives episode, just how like deeply entrenched the whole, you have to be good enough or you're not worth it mm -hmm. mentality is. Right. And it was all, it goes all the way back to his dad. And like, it's really hard to, dig oneself out from underneath all that. And it's really hard to put all that stuff down. Mm -hmm. But we get what, you know, and one of the best ways of doing that is being vulnerable and listening mm. to someone else, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. Well, there will be more from Grace. 
I'm sure, because he's got talent. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that has to be. <laughs> Can you imagine if he just disappeared and that's it? Like, <laughs> <sighs> they could have made that choice. Um, Absolutely, yeah. I, I'm not going to tell you any more about what's coming up with Grace, yeah. but there will be more yeah. with Grace. He's, he's got talent, and I'm looking forward to it. And he's, uh, he's definitely changed his opinion on Aaron. He, he has talent. What if he comes back and he attacks Scorpius with Talon? Oh, that could be cool. And then, and then Krace saves the day and he's the hero. Okay, that, that, that's my prediction. That's what I think, think is going to happen. <laughs> no? <laughs> okay, we are making a note of that as Jack's prediction for Krace and Talon. Listening to them, the audio version, Josh, Josh is just shaking, shaking his head. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and his his interaction with Aaron is interesting too. Mm. First, we get we've got nothing to say to each other mm. because I think we said everything when you left me for dead in the Aurora chair. I also I hate that he insists on calling her officer soon. I hate Same. that so much. I Same. hate it. It's like, so that's patronizing. Not her name. It's not her name. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> uh yes. Uh, and yeah, and then he he says at the end of evening that he hopes their relationship will be different in the future. See, it they're, they're setting some something up. I don't know what it is, but they're setting up something. <laughs> I I can't wait to see it, but uh the just her her like cold shouldering him the entire time was very satisfying mm. yeah and i feel like when she was trying to show him talent as a way of like look look at what what we've done look at what you've done mm-hmm. and he he definitely def- didn't take it like that he was definitely like oh hey this is kind of cool yeah he's like the the ground crowning glory mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah yeah, let, let's talk about our boy John. So I've just got a smattering of of uncoordinated note notes here. So just randomly and off the uh, cuff, um, the when 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 John and Zana having their uh, moments, and and he says it's a Jerry Springer kind of family, but it's a fair family, <laughs> you know. I get it, and that's funny, but without knowing what Jerry Springer is, I think Zahn's going to be like, dude, I have no idea what, what you're saying. Cool. <laughs> John I mean, Zahn has no idea what John is saying like 90% of the time. That is true. That is true. So I'm sure she, she, she's just like, this is something warm, so I'm just going to go along with it. But it would have been great if she was like, John, I don't know what that then is, but uh, okay. I think like, Zahn has been funny given up on, on saying, I don't know what that, well, I don't know what that means. <laughs> mm-hmm. I, that's like, I think there's one point in the season where she says, where she says that she has mm-hmm. no idea what John says most of the time. I think it was the, the one where he was time looping. Yes. Yes, all the way back, yeah. to back and yeah. back and back and back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Also, so I think they just go with John, it. To John, John's credit, so he was suspicious of Grace the entire time. Sure, he 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 was the only one really that was sus on him um, the mm. the entire time. Um, and I love his his uh, reaction when uh, Ryan, Rigel and Grace get get back to him. Boy, he just starts laughing. He's just <laughs> just like, of course, oh, boy, Grace. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so good. That is absolutely being an audio drop in the thing. <laughs> <laughs> My boy, Grace. <laughs> My boy, Grace. And then we have, and of course, John gets all his his sweet moments with everyone and he his moment with rigel where he gives him his offers him his stuff and gives him absolution which we talked about from rigel's end but i think it just it's it there's a lot through this episode that speaks to john's generosity Mm -hmm. yeah and 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 i think there is an air of him being resigned to his fate whatever it may be and so he's just trying to leave leave moya in the best possible way that he can like making making sure that everybody knows that he cares about them and is going to try and do his best here and yeah it's beautiful there's definitely like there's been touch points of 
John and how he feels about the characters and his relationships with him throughout. I mean, for sure, it started off as this kind of like, I don't know what the hell's going on. I don't know why I'm here. I don't know what team <laughs> you guys are doing here. Like, where's the bridge? What's the Star Trek answer? And everybody's like, what? Uh, and then we had one of the only good things about Jeremiah Crichton was <laughs> like his reaction to Dargo finally finding him and him being like, you guys were looking for me? Mm. Like, ah, uh, yeah. That was, that was. That was one of the the few things that I remember fondly about that episode. Um, yeah, but then yeah. just you know him finally like telling his dad on the tape recorder that it, you know that this it's a it's a family dad. You know, it's a weird kind of a thing that I found here, but it's it's fantastic. It's lovely. It's wonderful. Mm. It was just very just like, mm. and the scene with Tiana. I. You know, she attempts to thank him with sex because she doesn't know when any other way. And I love that he shows empathy and care. And he's like, no, 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 this, no, 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 sweetheart, no, this, this, this isn't happening. But then, however, it drives me crazy that they kiss. It's like this show, it just, it just picks someone, just picks, stop, stop it. Like, come on. If you're going to object to every kiss, everybody <laughs> loves somebody. <laughs> It's no, no. It's just John, John kissing everyone. Like I kind of see him as cheating on on uh, Aaron, even though there's not a you know, you know even like I mean he, he saw that too. Like he he was going to pull back from the kiss. Yeah, he's, it's kiss can mean kisses can mean lots of things. And yeah, but it's a, yeah, but it it was an open mouth kiss though. It wasn't just a little peck. <laughs> even then, I'm I mean, you're so. I, I, I mean, I love both of you, but I'm not going to open open mouth kiss either of you. Oh no, Sorry. which is but fine. <laughs> I, I think I mean it, it. It's just Chiana plays by her own rules, and mm. John is meeting her halfway. Yeah, look, I'm I'm mostly playing. I'm mostly playing, but it is <laughs> you know, it's it's a thing. It's, it was it's, a, it's it was a, a thing. sweet scene. And it was. It, her like you saved me that was one of the the moments for me in this episode mm. and like he you know he pulled back mm. yeah and the yeah. uh pay it forward mm. yes 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 and i i mean i to me i find it really interesting because i think we see that chiana thinks this is all she has to offer Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Even though we've seen how much she that you know, she was a big part of saving Aaron. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, they wouldn't have gotten on the base without her. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, and not just with her using her sexuality to distract people, you know, she thought of smart things. Mm. She killed she took someone. The, <laughs> she took the ID in the first place. Yeah, you know, um, and uh it, yeah it's just it's an interesting thing about chana but but i so i think her having someone you know she's she's not used to relying on other people we know mm -hmm. she is self-reliant and she relies on her wits and her body she's the person who said she can you know kiss kick or frell her way out of anything mm -hmm. and so here she is accepting that she can't and she has to accept someone else doing it for her and by Chana's rules she wants to offer herself in exchange for that and and i think yeah. her in i think this you know this moment where she comes up against someone who says no yeah i'm not going to take that i'm not going yeah. to i'm just you know that the, the she has to accept generosity hmm. and i i love that it spurs her then to think of something else that she can offer that is yeah. a generous act to mm -hmm. it's not her body. Um, I mean, not that there is anything wrong with her body and wanting her wanting to share it, but she was wanting to, to, to do that to some kind of, I don't know, some kind of exchange or something, mm -hmm. but well, because yeah. she seemed to think it was the only thing she has to offer, mm -hmm. but no, she can offer this incredibly generous act of, creating a meal for the family to share together. 
the feast scene right yeah so good yeah. <laughs> but um that was also in in the way that she offered her uh, body there was this sweetness to it she didn't do it in a sensual like sultry way it was it, it, it was it was done in a very sweet way and as, mm-hmm. as if to say i want to thank you in the only way i i know how to it wasn't um yeah she wasn't yeah i i i i think if she hadn't approached that in a in a more sexual like sensual soul soul sultry manner it wouldn't have had the same uh impact i think um yeah but yeah the feast is amazing kind of like a last supper kind of vibe yeah I mean, there were. I was getting Jesus Christ things all throughout. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <This> episode, <laughs> right down to a damn Last Supper. But um, yeah, you know, John providing absolution to everybody, and <laughs> <laughs> some some of that food looked real. Ugh, I don't know. Mm. I didn't like the way a lot of it looked, but that's the point, I guess. Yeah, I... All, like all of them just sitting down to dinner together and. Just... Those massive, like, parsnip-looking things. Yeah, they, we do get... It is a lovely image, the Last Supper. <laughs> yeah, the Last Supper. Um, <laughs> I also love that I think John and Dargo, they're finally actually friends, you know? Um, they're I can't brothers. Re- remember. Yes. Yeah, brothers. I got, like... I Which episode was it? A, a couple of episodes ago. Like, actually, quite quite a bit back, quite a bit back now, I think. Um there was an episode in which like Dargo more, more or less said, look, we're not actually going to be friends, but dude, you, you lied. Cause you are absolutely friends now. Absolutely. And, and, and they more, more or less said, Hey, like, yeah, we're not cool with each other, but we will have like a, a truce or something, but no, that that's. Yeah. But even back then you, you call out the lover's walk callback of like, you're not friends. So the blood, <laughs> so, yeah. so the blood runs cool. That's so, it. Yeah. So the bread line runs yeah. clear. Yeah. Um, um, but yeah, when they butch Cassidy and the whole thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They have the whole confrontation and yeah, we won't be yeah. friends, but we shall be allies. Yeah. But the, by the time the those, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. The, absolutely. Chicks did it. I, I hate this stuff, but chicks dig it. That the, the blessing. <laughs> No, and that's and that's okay to to acknowledge, Sarah. That's okay. <laughs> yeah, like I said, this this whole this whole episode has a lot to say about masculinity in really interesting yeah. ways, which is why I like Aaron car- calling out at the beginning. You know, the whole bathe in testosterone, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> warm glow of all this testosterone. Uh, yeah. So I guess males, um, I guess male. Uh, uh, um, Sebations and Luxons also have testosterone. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but yeah, no the 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 two the guys bonding is just awesome. And I and I love that they're on the tra- transporter heading out, and yeah, they're on a really dang- dangerous mission. Don't know if they're uh, gonna su- succeed. And John's like, "How how are you doing?" And uh, Doug is like, "I have to pee." <laughs> Like, like <laughs> such a cool, like, yeah, we're in a perilous situation, but let's just, let's just have fun with it. <laughs> yeah. Um, there was like a, yeah, make a light of the, a serious situation. Yes. And then of course there's the whole bit about, you know, why am I so calm? <gasps> that is one of my favorite lines in all the fiction. I I've got, I've got that in my notes. Fear accompanies the possibility of death. Calm shepherds its certainty. Wow. I love hanging with you, man. <laughs> Whoever wrote that, oh, wow, that is a hell of a line. It's Rockney S. O'Bannon and David Kemper working together. Okay, that that line is one of my favorite lines I've ever heard. It's wonderful. Love it. And I love that he follows that up with a bunch of pop culture references. Yeah, yeah. Kirk yeah. and Spock. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Was was the only said Abbott and Costello. Abbott and Costello. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who's on first? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. No, so I now, love that. And we get Dargo and Aaron friendship too, which is another yeah. wonderful bit. Yeah, that was cute. Brother and and her being angry with him, <laughs> the loving anger. I love. I love that that she's angry that he is going and he's insisting she stay with the baby. Mm -hmm. And um, talking of great lines, Aaron and Zahn 
how is what, what does she say? How can you be so remain so calm in such a violent, chaotic world? And Zahn says that um, when she committed murder, she surrendered her right <sighs> to live. And every moment uh, yeah. since is a gift from the goddess. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. That, I mean, what else can I say? It's, be- it's beautiful. <laughs> now they're just hanging out in space. And everybody loves everybody, and I love them too. And is it, they've only got two spacesuits, right? The one that was in Aaron's Prowler and the one that was in John's spaceship. That's why... Okay, mm-hmm. I was just making sure that I had that right because otherwise, like, just because you have a superpower doesn't mean you have to use it all the time. Right. Yeah, well, we already lost one of the space suits when um, in the flax. I didn't recall. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. One of them gets damaged. Um, so yeah, there is only John's, and um, as we don't know that we don't know that there is a spaceship that would fit Dargo. Mm-hmm. So now so. they're just hanging out and over the planet, and Aaron is buzzing about, waiting for her chance to go in and get them. And Zahn is with Chiana and Rigel on Moya, mm-hmm. and Crace has Talon, mm-hmm. and Scorpius has you know everything. <laughs> and they set an entire planet ablaze. Like holy crap! Like, <laughs> yes, that is John that Crichton is was most, here. <laughs> that is like the most action hero movie shit I've, I've seen in this series to date. Like, an entire planet, <laughs> yes, yeah, uh, that was definitely the most John McClane. <laughs> yes, yes, like yippee ki yay, mm-hmm. motherfucker, like boom, yeah, and we got John's speech to Moya. Mm. oh yeah oh yeah um we care about your baby no we know you care about your your baby we care too you gotta uh yeah it's the it's the put your uh mask on yourself before you put it on the child yeah speech. and it's also the like you can let us help yeah mm. Yeah, like we're all in this t- together. You you don't have to feel mm-hmm. like you're alone. So I wonder what do we have to say on themes in this episode? It was so subtle that theme there. <laughs> you know, I was picking up a, a theme of like family and, of, and yeah, a, a I was getting a, a soup song of you know, yeah, <laughs> you know, like t- togetherness. Um, I'm getting through trouble together, dealing with things together <laughs> as a unit. Um, and, and, you know, f- f- familial ties, you know, yes, mm, yes, they, so, they something familiar and, and a tying, yeah, it's mm, not, yeah, it's <laughs> it's so subtle, it's so subtle, though. <laughs> yeah, I mean, why, uh, sometimes why you don't need say? subtlety, exactly. no, exactly. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it is worth thinking about the the sort of th- some of the th- the way they thread family through the episode. Maybe a subtle theme of redemption too, with Crace or an an attempted red redemption. Um, I don't know. Well, they Sorry. do. They you mean they book in Rigel and Crace, and and they their their plot lines cross in an X. You know, starts off with mm-hmm. Rigel betraying the crew, it ends with Crace betraying the crew. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it. The question is, is you know, what will they find when they find Grace and Talent? Will they find an, an enemy or will they find an ally? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's and and I'm betting on ally. I really am. Um, that they are going to go for the sub subversive route. I think. Um, and um, it's interesting that the well, we have a sort of we have a kind of Valjean. Uh, thing of it you know the uh, the, from Les Mis Mm -hmm. sort of Mm -hmm. the selfish characters are offered generosity Mm -hmm. and how do they respond after John offers absolution and kindness and even including including material goods (laughs) to Rigel um Rigel has this you know he's he's clearly having a sort of um 
dark night of the of his own soul through the rest of this. You know, he's yeah. definitely feeling conflicted and and feeling. You know, he he's he's willing to be sac- self sacrificing at the end. Like yeah. I'm in terms of Al John, I'm thinking about like there is this moment. I don't know how well you know the story. It's one of my favorite stories ever. Valjean is a thief who is convicted and spends 20 years in um, on prison barges. And when he gets out, he is um, he, he has a passport and he's treated as a pariah and he, he not given no comfort anywhere. And this one priest offers him a bed and has uh, use, serves him with silver um, on silver uh, with silver cutlery and everything, and Valjean in and the knight gets up and steals the silverware oh. uh, and runs away and is captured and brought back to the house. And the priests and and the, the 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 policemen, you know, say to the priest, "We caught this man stealing your silverware." And he said, "No, you caught this man with the gift of silverware that I gave him." And Monsieur, you forgot the silver candlesticks. <laughs> and then Valjean has this crisis of conscience because he could have gone back to spend the entire rest of his life in prison, but the generous moment from this this bishop. Um, he sort of makes him have this whole reevaluation of himself. I love the I love the song, <laughs> the musical, and then he goes on to become uh, a generous, honest man, even though um, he's pursued for the rest of his life Val, by Valjean, uh, by okay. Javert. Um, so I think we have John acting, John who has been pursued by, <laughs> by, uh, Crace in a sort of Javert type, um, role. He, and he offers generosity to both Crace and to Rigel. And we see Rigel is having the, and he, but he offers grace and generosity to everyone, um, mm-hmm. to all of our selfish characters. And they are all three of them cr- seriously having crises about this. You know, we, we Chiana's is very subtle. And she repays with the gift of the meal. Um, and Rigel is having crisis the whole time. And he's at the last minute, like wanting to be self-sacrificing and not and not fly away and leave them there. And John insists that no. Don't give up selfish just now. And we've got Crace. Crace sort of seems to be tempted to be good, but then he is tempted by the, by the ship. And, I, and yeah, and he, this is kind of a, the counterpoint to the, the question of like the, the fable of the scorpion that, mm-hmm. you know, the, that you can never trust the scorpion. It will sting you no matter what, uh, mm-hmm. because it's in his nature. And yet, the counterpoint to that is Rigel and Chiana both are changing when, mm-hmm. you know, offered the chance. Mm. So I, I, I felt as though Crace might be escaping out of fear too, just um, mm. one, yeah. wanting to get the hell out and the there. Cause like, you know, everything's sort of gone to shit. He doesn't want to end up back with Scorp- Scorpius, but he doesn't feel like he has a place with, with the crew. So I think he's just, looking after himself and getting the hell out out of there because he's scared and doesn't really see another option, but who knows? Yeah. He's looking out for himself that Mm. and himself alone. It's one of the, one of the hallmarks of moral action is the ability to risk yourself for someone else. Mm -hmm. And he's not, he's not there yet. If he ever gets there, I don't know, but he's not there yet. Mm. Well, see, I was just thinking to myself, Val Ron, at last, (laughs) we see each other playing. The whole time. See, I thought of them. Um, <laughs> do you hear the people sing, singing a song of Angry Men? It's a good, it's a good musical. <laughs> yeah, I've I've never seen it. I'm I'm familiar with some of the the uh, plot plot points and the the music, but yeah, I've never actually mm-hmm. seen. Yeah, something. don't don't watch the Tom Hooper version. It's bad. Oh, Is that the one with Russell Crowe in it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, like- I saw like I saw like a snippet of Russell Russell Crowe singing. And I'm like, no, nah, I'm good. I'm I'm fine. <laughs> I don't want to. Yeah, no. Nah. So yeah, uh, do we have anything more to say on the ever so subtle theme of family? <laughs> I've exhausted all of my notes. So if you guys have more, by all means. 
we have formed a family. And that, okay. that I think is probably also why everybody was talking about their prior families, the ones they've left. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, God, they, it was just family. It was family. This episode, it's family. It was just about family. <laughs> family, 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 family. Yeah, and chosen family, actual family, 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 family. family. And Scorpius is forming a bond with someone. Yeah, that dude uh, <laughs> from the last episode too. What, what's the character's name? Cabo? Bra- Braca. Braca. Oh uh, yeah. Uh, I recognized him while we were in the live watch because the the actor plays um, or played Brutus on Xena Warrior Princess, and hmm. and I'm a Xena aficionado, um, and he does. I mean, apparently here he's in a similar role of like betraying somebody. <laughs> well, his career may be on the rise. I'm sure it is. <laughs> I wonder what ha- happened to Emily. I thought she was going to like slaughter everybody and eat everybody's bones. We do get a scene in the very beginning of the episode. Yeah. Crace mentions to Scorpius that they haven't heard from a transport that was carrying oh, yeah. the girl you decided to rescue. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. It's not I responding. Hope get, I hope we get more of that, though, because... I, but the horror movie fan of me just wants to know exactly what happened there. Because be I see. I hope we don't. I hope we just get like a line of dialogue once or twice a season. <laughs> that's like, yeah, we haven't heard from that colony in a while. <laughs> Anyways, uh, like, sadly, I must report that we will not. We will not hear from Emily again. We will have to Aww. imagine. It is free to imagine in your head what Emily does perhaps every time like, we don't we no longer see a certain species she's kind of visit there. Like, literally the last we see of her she's like hugging scorpius and so it's like oh but, all right it Fine. is not the last we will see of that actress we will see a lot more of francesca yeah. Bueller, but in different yeah. roles okay, okay yeah that's fair. she was Matala also wasn't she no she wasn't Matala. that the uh emily is her first role Emily's our first one. Oh, Matala. Jack. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you don't need Matala. Matala is dead. We don't need Matala because we have Chiana. I mean, oh, Chiana. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hold together. Jack. I'm calm. I'm calm. Okay. I'm calm. Oh. oh, I thought of one other thing I wanted to ask. We did get mm-hmm. the mention of Scorpius's species. The Scarins? Scar and oh, yeah, half Scarins. breed mm. is what um Crace calls him. Okay, so he's part Scarin, whatever that mm. is. And isn't that interesting given what we if we think back on uh Dargo and his family and what we learned about what peacekeepers oh. peacekeepers attitude to racial purity. Okay. There was no because there was a whole thing. It's like he was because he was locked up for getting involved yeah. with the, with the sebation. Yeah. And if Scorpius is the result of something like that, then the peacekeepers, but he's like, a, okay, now I'm, now I'm confused. It's about power. What do you think Scorpius has to be to be exempt from more those? Pow- more powerful, more ruthless, more well, dangerous, yeah, more yeah, deadly. Yeah, just... Uh, more threatening, more more intimidating, more more pow- powerful. Yeah, yeah. For the peacekeepers to consider him one of the good ones, I guess yeah. enough to make use of him. Certainly, yeah. he doesn't have he a must, rank. He must just be really good at what he does, I guess. Or uh, like he took out somebody at the top, and everybody was like, "Okay, well, we're not going to fuck with you." <laughs> I don't know. We will learn more um, oh in time, but but uh, yeah, I just I just thought I thought it was an interesting thing to draw yeah, your attention to. I, ha- I hadn't thought thought about that, so I'm glad you uh, did. Yeah, the thought hadn't come uh, across my mind. Mm-hmm. We also have the um, moment where um, Dargo gives his um, image of his family to Zon for safekeeping. <gasps> oh yeah. Uh, it's one of the little touches mirrored also with we have the um for the first time since the pilot the good luck ring 
the good mm-hmm. luck charm mm-hmm. from John's dad makes an appearance. Or actually, no, it did make an appearance in Human Reaction. But this this is the three beat. Family, oh. man, family, <laughs> family. Yeah. Okay, and we are going to have um, our next episode, folks, is actually going to be us talking about the season as a whole mm. um, before we move on to the second season. Um, and shall I tell you now or tell you then what the title of the first episode of the second season is? Tell us then. Let us. Let okay. Us... Yeah, tell us then. Yeah. yeah, yeah <laughs> All right. Yeah. All right then. Um, so mm. I think we have come to favorite parts. Hands down, uh, uh, Crace and John with Crace in the cell. Everything about that scene is magic. The way it's shot, the way it's acted, the way it's written, just love it. It's it's not only my 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 favorite scene in this episode. It might be my favorite scene this season. It it's one of I, I know it's going to be one of my favorite scenes in the entire series. It, it's just wonderful, and I love it. Yeah, that was that was it was between that and the dinner for me. <laughs> uh, for my favorite scenes uh, because I'm a rank sentimentalist. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it is. Yeah, I, I have to give it to the tear. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, it's, there's so many. Uh, can I pick the whole thing? No, no, yeah. it is. It is the. Just, just the tear. It is just yeah, that. Single tear. That level of sheer desperate vulnerability from john vulnerability is and it's just like that's an incredible moment of acting from ben browder mm-hmm. oh yeah absolutely 100 oh yeah and the direction from is just them. like the writing the direction the acting it is the entire so composition good. yeah it's just yeah. amazing and i i will never get over the the shot of Chris through the hole in the bars like it's just such a well come composed shot i love it so much yeah, I love, you can always tell when Tony Tilsey is directing because he's got the submarine sort of thing and he just makes use of the space. Mm-hmm. Mm. Okay, so as I said, next time we will be discussing the season as a whole and then mm-hmm. I will also, and then I will let you know about the upcoming titles of episodes. Uh, so yeah, I guess, are we at, uh, you know, Tell this us, is our tell close, us, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, Jack, you want to tell the folks where they can hear more from you? You can find me on Twitter at lack of surprise one. That's all one word with the number one at the end. Uh, you can find me over on Discord in um, Muppet Sex and Trauma Discord ser- server. Um, and you can find me on Instagram at Jack Cram, all lowercase one word. That's me. Josh, what about you, you sir? I hang out over on Instagram as well, where we come, you know, and talk about food and self-care and male vulnerability now. And so, you know, we got all that kind of stuff going for us. Sarah? I'm Sarah Azat. I could now call myself Sarah Azat BA, I think. Yeah! <laughs> Woo! Why don't you tell us a bit about that, Sarah? I I guess I, I'm, I'm a film scholar now. I have uh now matriculated my yes i know i i yes it took me until i was 42 but i finished my undergrad um and will now be looking at potential grad school this is my yeah we'll see it takes a while to apply but yeah um congratulations i did the thing <laughs> you, you did it with you adhd in in a, in a pandemic <laughs> That's a hell of an achievement, dude. Like, <laughs> holy shit. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Distance learning work turned out to work rather well for me. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, so I did the thing. And um, I will be continuing to make YouTube videos um, at the Costume Codex. And uh, I also, t- you can also find me on Twitter at Bluestock and Sara. Um uh, yeah, that's me. Uh, okay, so, and uh, you can find all of us uh, occasionally in our Discord, the um, mm-hmm. the um, link to which will be in the doobly-doo. Um, or you can tweet the podcast at Muppet Sex and T1. Or you can email us at Muppet Sex and Trauma at gmail.com. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. 
the links to all of that will be in the doobly doo. And with that, we will we will see you in two weeks. Goodbye, good. friends. Bye, Bye folks. By the way, can I just quickly say, Josh, your intro, I always look forward to it because I always like, I'm always excited to hear what you're going to say. I appreciate it. It's my favorite part of recording, I think. It's something different every time. Yeah. Also, also, I'm going to have to make the the opening outtake, the bit about us talking about words so that the cornucopia yeah. of Satanists makes sense. It is. It sounds so fancy, but it's not really that fancy. <laughs> That's why I like it. It's like I was so disappointed when I looked up the word crepuscular. Like that sounds like it means something really, really cool, but it just means animals that are most active around twilight. Really? Okay? I thought yeah. yeah, it totally is a word that sounds like it should mean something. Yeah, but it's it just yeah, that that's what it means. I like so. words that sound like what they like are describing. Like one of my favorite weird words is susuration, mm. which means a like a low humming murmur. <laughs> that's that's what it sounds like it means. Totally. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my favorite totally word. Is. My absolute favorite word is moist. Because it makes some people so uncomfortable, and I love that <laughs> moist, especially just, especially when you emphasize it, moist. It makes me think of the '90s Canadian goth band, well, moist. alternative band, but David Usher. Oh, he was so pretty. I don't know. <laughs> it's just you say it, and some people are like, "Ew, don't use that word." I'm like, "What?" It just seems I, like Damn. I can't. I I. I and it just seems like a, such a strange reaction to have to a word. It is. It is. Like, I, I don't get it. And, and but it makes me love it even more that people have, have such a visceral reaction to it. It's funny. God, I'm like <laughs> well, I, I, yeah, I don't know. I, I live in BC. I think I, I, if I couldn't get used to the concept of moisture, I'd be in the wrong place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Same like where I live. Melbourne is very moist. Moist. So it's always cold and it's always wet. That sounded That's what she memory. said. <laughs> that, exactly. Exactly. Although those two things do not go together. <laughs> no. <laughs> In that I don't mean they shouldn't. They absolutely shouldn't. Well, I mean, temperature play is a thing. That is true. That. <laughs> That is true, Sarah. That is very true. <laughs> <laughs> well, on the subject of kinky things, shall we talk about Farscape? I think we should. <laughs> yeah, let's do that. That's a good idea.